Hello and welcome. Today I'm going to be talking about enumerables and enumerators. Now this can be a complex topic and unless you know how it's working underneath, your code might not be doing exactly what you think it's doing. So I'm going to show you uh, what they are, how to use them and actually how to make your own uh, enumerables. So let's start by making a class and let's just call this uh, Hero Academy. And in here we're going to have a name of the Academy and let's call this uh, Olympus. Olympus. I've been playing a lot of Hades recently. Uh, private list and let's make this uh, a string list and this will be uh, Olympians and this will be equal to a new list and this will have who were the best Olympians? Zeus was a badass. Uh, Poseidon was. Poseidon and we'll do Aphrodite or is it Aphrodite? I don't know. Cool so over here we'll say academy equals new hero academy and just as a normal object we can you know see the name there uh, we obviously can't see these Olympians as it's a private list but let's say we wanted to uh, loop over this object so we wanted to say for each bar name in academy uh, obviously this is not going to work because it's saying uh, Hero Academy cannot uh, use 4H because it doesn't implement I enumerable. So let's fix that over on our Hero Academy. Let's make this implement I enumerable uh, and that will be in the system collections namespace. So this is just telling C Sharp, hey, this Hero Academy can be enumerated uh, somehow. It doesn't know how to enumerate it, uh, but we'll get to that. So this is giving us an error. It's saying, hey, we need to implement the missing members. So we'll see there's two words here, I enumerable and I enumerator, obviously seems very similar. So this one tells C Sharp it can be enumerated. This one tells C Sharp how to enumerate it. All right, so uh, I enumerator is another interface. And if we just go into it, and these are the three functions required uh, to uh, use 4H properly. All right, so it's saying uh, move next, so move to the next index, uh, what the current item of the array is, so that will be this here. And if we ever wanna reset it, go back to the very first index of the array, uh, we can do that too. So let's head back. So we could fill out all those methods ourselves, right? We could make our own uh, enumerator, which we will do later on. But for now, let's cheat. We know that we just want to uh, iterate over this list here. And we know that list, if we go into it, and we go down into I list, we know that list already implements I enumerable, all right? Or else we wouldn't be able to actually use a for each on a list. So because we know we're iterating this, let's just return the Olympians dot get enumerator right because we know that our list implements enumerable which means we know that it's got this function so we're just going to return back out to the for each loop uh, the lists uh, enumerable so now we can say console dot write line name so take note this is an object that we've just created but now we can iterate over it as well as get access to the normal uh, properties on the object so if we press play here We'll see Zeus, Poseidon, Aphrodite. Okay, cool. So now you know what these two things are and roughly what they do. I'm going to now uh, just stop on this example and I'm going to show you how you're probably already using I enumerables and how you could potentially be screwing up uh, what you think you might actually be doing. I'll show you a few gotchas. So I'm gonna create a rand instance here, a random instance, as I know that I'm gonna be using random a few, a few times. Uh, and then I'm gonna create a list of numbers, and I'm just gonna do this by enumerable range zero to 10, and I'm gonna to list it. So basically what this is doing is it's just creating a list of numbers from zero to 10. So now let's say we want to query some of these numbers, and an easy way to do that is with link. So let's say uh, random numbers, and we'll go numbers here, and then we'll order them by number, and then we'll use our rand next. So we're just like randomly ordering these numbers, and we're just gonna take three of them. So now we could simply for each var number in random numbers, and we could say console.writeline number. 
So let's press play. And we'll see three random numbers, seven, one, zero. But what do you think is gonna happen if we copy this for each loop and do this twice, right? So let's press play. Zero, four, one, one, six, zero. So this is, this is actually giving us two sets of random numbers. You may have looked at this and thought, okay, here are the random numbers, right? These, these are the random numbers that we've just returned from this query and now we're just gonna loop over them two times. But that's not the case. So if we inspect what type this is, we will see that it is of type I enumerable, okay? So this is not storing the numbers. This is not a variable with three numbers in it. This is just a query. And then when we get here, we're running this query, right? And then once this for each loop finishes and it goes to this one, we are then running the query again to uh, get another set of random numbers. If you're just learning this now, you're probably thinking, oh shit, I need to go back through some of my code and find out if I'm actually performing enumerations multiple times. Now, that doesn't mean that performing an enumeration multiple times is a bad thing, okay? Sometimes it can be a very good thing, but you need to just know that this is how it works. Now, if you wanted to loop these number, like the same set of numbers two times, you could simply do this, to list. So now we're saying, grab the numbers, order them, take three of them and then set them in stone, make a list out of them, actually cement them in this variable. So now this variable is of type list, right? So now if we press play, we will see 537, 537. So now that's more predictable, right? So there's a few things you need to keep in mind here. One, two listing means you're grabbing all of the items and you're putting them all in memory in the heap, right? You're grabbing them all, putting them all in memory, which means once this goes out of scope, the garbage collector is going to have a little bit of extra uh, allocated garbage that's going to have to clean up. Whereas if you don't to list it, we are actually only pulling one number at a time uh, into the scope right now. We're pulling one number into memory at a time, which can obviously be a good or a bad thing. For example, say you have, you've got, uh, you're going to grab a million items, right? If you to list it, you are putting 1 million items into a list and that could crash your app, right? It could it could absolutely crash your app. Uh, and that in that scenario, it might be better to leave it as an, enum an enumerable, even if you're gonna do it two times, right? Because not not every query is gonna return uh, random results, right? This could You could just do a where statement here and you could iterate over them one at a time and then later on in your, uh, in your function, you could also iterate them over again and it may not matter that you're doing the where statement two times. Uh, the benefit is better, the CPU cycles is better doing the where statement twice than uh, pulling them all into memory, right? So just a uh, direct example, right? Let, let's let's say this is not random numbers. Let's just rename this and uh, call it uh, uh, grid positions, right? So let, let's say that we're this is actually doing some kind of pathfinding and just pretend for a moment because they're not actually grid positions, they're numbers. But uh, let's say instead of uh, doing something random, we're doing where, and just to make this simulate a more expensive task, like pathfinding, for example, let's just say we're uh, delaying for 10 milliseconds and we'll, we'll wait for that and then we'll return true. So I know this is a very pointless uh, where statement. I'm literally just returning true on everything, but uh, this will allow us to simulate a longer running task. Um, and let's not just take three, let's grab them all. So then if we do this, let's say four times, right? And this is disgusting. So let's actually iterations equals four. And then here we can do four each, uh, four iterations. Then we can just slap that in there. And it's not so chunky. Cool. So basically we're just doing, we're, we're looping that for the iterations, but we're, we're calling our enumeration four times now, right? And just to inspect this, let's do uh, a watch equals new stopwatch. And we'll say watch dot oops, watch dot start, and then down here we'll do watch dot stop, and then we'll do console right line elapsed uh, watch dot elapsed milliseconds. Cool. So we're now going to call this enumeration four times. So if we press play here, 
you can see how that slowly went down. Like that could be a pathfinding uh, algorithm or it could be something even more expensive, right? You could be, um, you could be reading from disk or something. So that took 600 milliseconds to loop this four times because uh, we're actually redoing this pathfinding algorithm four times. So instead of doing that, we could two list it, right? And pull them all into memory, just process it once, pull them all into memory. And now when we press play here, it's like almost instant, right? Nine milliseconds. So from nine milliseconds all the way up to 600 milliseconds is the difference between two listing or not. So it's it's really, it's a judgment call. Do you want to allocate the extra memory of the two list, right? Uh, and just remember, you're not just pulling all the items into memory, you're also creating the, the, the class itself, right? So that's also allocated, uh, which will have to be garbage collected. So it's, it, you've got to weigh the pros and cons. Do you want to two list it and allocate the memory? Or do you want to actually just keep running the uh, enumerable over and over? Okay, so you, you need to probably benchmark in what situation is best. Okay, if it's a really quick, uh, if it's a really quick statement, like like a simple where statement or an order buyer that doesn't obviously have this stupid weight here, it may be perfectly fine for you to just double enumerate instead of uh, pulling into a list. So yeah, if you have just learned this, I'm sure you are thinking about some code that you've written uh, that you probably need to go back and refactor or at least take a look at to see if you're doing the right thing or if you're running multiple enumerations when you shouldn't, when you shouldn't be uh, or maybe multiple enumerations is fine, you never know. And just a little side note, uh, if we remove this to list so it's an enumerable again, Rider, I've only just started using Rider over the last two weeks but uh, Rider gives you little performance optimization tips like it's doing right here, possible multiple en enumeration, right? It's, it's telling us, hey, you may not be realizing that you're actually enumerating this multiple times. I'm going to warn you about it. Maybe you want to do something about it. Maybe you don't. But it's, it's small things like that that just make Rider such a nice IDE to use, uh, as well as obviously all the audio complete and just other suggestions. It's just fantastic. And before, when I used to use uh, Visual Studio, I, I also used to use ReSharper plugged into it, which is also made by these guys. Uh, and whenever I used to turn off ReSharper and just use basic Visual Studio, my development speed just went way down. ReSharper and Rider just do so much for you that you don't even realize how much they're doing until you actually turn it off. So I highly recommend uh, the Rider idea. It's fantastic. Or uh, getting ReSharper for Visual Studio. Honestly, you won't look back. Uh, it's fantastic. Anyway, that's a side note. Hello, so I'm happy to say that this video is sponsored by JetBrains, the creator of uh, ReSharper, Rider, and a bunch of other beautiful tech. Uh, they were lovely enough to give me five one-year licenses to the Rider IDE, which I'm using in this video. All I'd like you to do to get your little fingies on it is uh, comment down below what you think of this video and give me an idea of what you would like to see in a future video. And uh, also let me know that you would indeed like one of these licenses. And in the near future, I'll pick five of you and I'll send you a license. And that's about it. Enjoy the rest of the video. Bye. Okay, so now that you kind of know what the enumerations are doing, I'm going to show you it uh, actually a deep dive into it. I'm going to write my own enumerable and this will be a type int. Let's say get numbers. And in here I'll do a for loop for 10. And now as you, as you saw here, we're pulling one item into the scope at, at, at any one time, right? We're not grabbing them all, we're just pulling one at a time. And we can do that with I enumerables like this, with the contextual yield keyword, right? So we yield return and we'll just return I. And if, you're, if you use Unity, you may uh, actually recognize this yield as uh, in coroutines, you will say yield new wait for seconds, right? Or wait for the end of frame. Okay, so instead of waiting for the end of frame, we're just uh, waiting for i to be returned. So now down here, we can say for each var num in get numbers. And we'll just console write line the num. And if we set a breakpoint here and here, right, and let's actually also console write line and we'll say uh, processed i. And let's press debug. So it's come down here, it said, all right, get first, get, get numbers. So now it's asking for our first number, which will be zero, obviously. And then once, once we uh, go to the next step here, it's now down back into our for each loop, 
right? And this number is now zero, so we'll console log our number. And now it's gonna come back up here and ask for our next number. So now I will be equal to one and it's gonna now return that. And it's just going to keep going through this, pulling each item one by one, right? As soon as this number here goes out of scope, it's now, it's, it's now gonna be triggered by the garbage collector at some point in the future to say, clean it up, we don't need it anymore, right? And now this next number is now coming into scope one by one. Uh, so you can see uh, just how powerful this could possibly be, right? So we could actually we could actually say that this is going to return one million numbers, okay? But we could do something like this now. Var if num is more than five, then uh, break out of this loop, right? And we could do just something down here just to, to say, hey, uh, right line, we're done. So even know that this IE enumerable could potentially return one million numbers. Because here we're breaking out of this statement to say, if we're five, we're done and we're leaving, this will only process five or six, sorry, more than five. So instead, if you had a get numbers function, right? And it was a list, right? And you're saying new list here, add to list and then return the list. Even if you're only wanting five on the outside, this will still do one million numbers and then uh, you will just end up using five, right? So plus that's pulling a million numbers into memory uh, for you to only use five, right? So I always recommend if you've got some kind of function that returns a collection, return an IE enumerable, yield it if you can. Uh, and that way in one point of your application, you might use the full million. Whereas in another application or another part of your application, you, you have the luxury of only using the five. And we can actually use link on this. So uh, three numbers and we'll say get numbers dot take three. And if you remember, this is actually an IE enumerable as we're using link here. So this is not storing the numbers. Once it gets down to here, this still hasn't even executed. This, this function hasn't even called yet. It will only actually call if we act on something. And a super interesting part is if we console write line and we'll do like three numbers and we'll just say first, right? Even though that we're saying that we wanna take three here, because we're only acting on the first one, and we press play, only the first one, it's only gonna iterate this one time just to grab the one that we need, and then just like, just ignore the rest. It's not even gonna do anything for the rest. So you can write super performant code by using IE enumerables and you can reuse a lot of your code by having one function to return a ton of different uh, amount of items, okay? Instead of returning the list and grabbing all of them and then just taking some of the list. So keep that in mind because it's a very good performance tip and a good code reusability tip. Now that we have uh, kind of explored this a little bit, I will just show you lastly, how you can actually create your own I enumerator. So right now we were lazy. We just returned the list I enumerator, right? Cause we knew that this one already had it, but let's create our own. So let's create a class. This will be an Academy uh, enumerator. And this will implement I enumerator, I enumerator. Okay. And as I showed you before, this has three functions that we need to implement, move next, reset and current object. We know that we're gonna to need to return this academy enumerator here, right? Instead of like just grabbing the list one. So we actually need to know what we're enumerating, okay? We know that we're gonna be enumerating this list. So let's create a constructor here. And in this constructor, it's going to take a list of type string and this will be the names. And then down here, we'll say names equals names. And then we will auto scaffold that. And then we also need a index because we need to know which item of the array we need to keep handing to them. So let's go private int index, and this will be equal to negative one. And the reason I make it negative one is because, do I have my, no, I don't. Var academy, oops, academy equals new hero academy. And then if we do for each var hero in academy, so, when we first hit this, it's going to immediately say, uh, get next, move next, right? So if we made this zero, it's actually gonna make it one. So then we're gonna grab the second element of the array. So you need to set it to negative one so that when you first say it, it's gonna be on, on index zero. This function here is actually gonna do two things. One, 
it's going to iterate the index. Okay, so move to the next index. And two, it needs to return a Boolean. And this Boolean is saying, is there another item in the array? Uh, if this returns false, it's gonna get to here after iterating it a few times, it will get to here, it's gonna return false. So then it's going to just leave the for each loop and then continue execution down the rest of your application. So we can easily say, is there another item by saying, uh, is index less than uh, names.count? If it is, then yes true keep keep iterating um, our reset function is very easy it's just index is going to be equal back to the start of the uh, of the array so that we can enumerate it again so if you remember on our numbers array we were enumerating and then we would have another for each loop enumerating again so that's because the index would be reset to negative one each time and then our current is just our, the current version of our um, of our object. So that will be this here. This is our current version of the iteration. So here we can just say uh, return uh, names index. And ReSharper is actually telling us that we can make it an expression body. So that's nice and neat. So now we've got our custom academy enumerator. So here instead of returning the list one directly, we can Oh, sorry, doggies all over the place. We can return our custom academy enumerator, new academy enumerator. And we've got a uh, constructor here, which takes in the name. So let's send in our Olympians. And now here we can say console.writeline hero. So now th this is going to be using our brand spanking new academy enumerator. Uh, so let's just check to see if that works. Beautiful. And if we put our mouse over this, we'll see that this is actually a type of object, okay? It doesn't actually even know that this is, uh, we're enumer enumerating strings here, which means we can't actually perform link expressions here. We can't do this, for example, we can't say where. So to enable link expressions and to add proper typing to this, we just need to change these to the generic types. So instead of just I enumerable, we'll have an I enumerable of type string and this is saying hey you have got more methods that you need to implement and if we go into the generic version of this we'll see that there's the generic get enumerator right but then this generic uh, i enumerable is actually inheriting from the base i enumerable which also has like the basic get enumerator so that falls back onto us to have to uh, actually implement both so let's remove this and then just implement these two so the good thing about this is we don't actually have to worry about this base one. Okay, so this base one, they've, they've already pre-filled it to say, hey, just return whatever the generic version uh, returns. So we call them the base one by actually directly referencing the, the interface and then calling the method directly. So we can just ignore this one and just use this one to return our custom enumerator. So we'll return new academy enumerator and we'll send in our Olympians. And this is giving an error. Ah, it's because our enumerator is actually also needs to be generic. So let's make this a string. And the generic version of iEnumerator requires a little bit of different setup. So I'm just going to remove this. It needs a disposable, which we won't actually use. So I'm just going to remove the not implemented throw and uh, re-implement the get. So this is just still going to be names and then index. And we'll make this the expression buddy. Cool. And if we press play now, we'll see that it returns our two names, which are long enough. Cool bananas. So uh, ultimately you don't need to know this side, like how to make your own enumerable, how to make your own enumerator. Uh, this is advanced stuff, right? But this stuff that I have taught over here, uh, I wish I didn't actually remove it all, but uh, yeah, so this stuff, uh, knowing when to to list your enumerables is vital, okay? You might have to go through your old code to check to see if you're actually enumerating things multiple times when you shouldn't be, uh, but this stuff is important. So make sure you study this and know what you're doing. Uh, it could save, you know, database rights or uh, file system rights or pathfinding a million times when you shouldn't be having, when you shouldn't need to. 
So that's it. That's all I wanted to show you. If you enjoyed the video, subscribe. Let me know down below what other advanced topics you would like me to cover. Uh, I've got a list, but uh, it's always good to have it keep growing so that I can just smash through them. And uh, that's it. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.